bienvenido and welcome to another episode of me talking about things that I don't really understand. And this week we're looking at something that the more I looked into, the less I actually understood. And that's weddings! Not a subject people get upset about ever. So that's, that's cool, We're, this will be fun. Now obviously weddings are a pretty simple concept to grasp, right? Two people fall in love and okay, two people meet and they, a person decides they want to commit forever. A person decides they want to commit for some time and they decide to do an event about it. Okay, that's... That's what a wedding is. Now, obviously, weddings are a spectrum, and that may sound silly, but it, it, it's pretty accurate. Because it can vary from being a civil marriage to a religious or spiritual marriage. It can be an interfaith marriage. A common law marriage. A monogamous or polygamous a marriage. A left-handed marriage. A secret marriage. A shotgun a marriage. marriage. A, a convenience marriage. marriage. A zombie marriage. Yes, that's a real term. A group a parenting marriage. marriage. A safety marriage. A court marriage. An open marriage. And yeah, that's probably just the tip of the iceberg, to be honest. So yeah, spectrum. But hey, who doesn't love variety? Now, as some of you may already know, my fiance proposed to me last March, and ever since then, she and I have been working hard on planning this wedding and wanting to get married in France when most of your friends are in the US and most of your families in Mexico can sometimes get a little hard to handle. We've basically just accepted the fact that we weren't going to be making everybody happy, and it's really helped us out. My friend John from West Virginia probably isn't used to the same weddings as my tia Dolores from San Luis Potosí. But planning this wedding has made me think about how different weddings must be around the world, and I thought we'd talk about it. So let's dive in. Across many cultures, weddings are considered to be one of the most important days of our lives. A joyous ceremony. But obviously, it's not always white dresses, tall cakes, and drunken best man speeches. From spitting on the bride in Kenya to the very French tradition of eating onion soup in the early hours of the morning, weddings around the world are full of surprises. Now, over the years, weddings have evolved. But some traditions that are still very popular today began thousands of years ago. In fact, the earliest evidence of a wedding taking place is 4,350 years ago. And they've probably mostly paid it off by now. Hopefully. While both American and French weddings share a lot of similarities, there are some distinctive differences between the two celebrations. And I mean other than going to a wedding with your favorite piece. Of, of cake, piece of cake. The main difference between the two is that in France, you must get married in a town hall. France is super serious about its separation of church and state. America, not so much. And so couples in France must hold their wedding ceremony at City Hall or it doesn't count. In America, anyone can be registered by the state to officiate a wedding, even your Uncle Joe. In France, it has to be a mayor or a local elected official if he's not too busy cutting ribbons or I don't know what they do. Most of us will be familiar with traditional American weddings that we see in movies and TV shows with the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the bachelor and the bachelorette, the parties, not the show. And even though that kind of stuff doesn't really exist in France, it's happening more and more. Not to mention that in France, a bachelor or bachelorette party is called an enterrement de vie de jeune fille ou de garçon, which literally translates into the burial of the life of a young girl or boy. This is clearly referencing the fact that when you get married, you are no longer a little boy or little girl, you are now a man or a woman, and that your life as a little boy or little girl is dead. But still, bringing up death in the world of marriage is just so French. So French. French weddings also tend to have a smaller guest list of family and close friends for more intimate celebrations. While Americans tend to have a larger guest list that includes extended family, acquaintances, co-workers that you never speak to, pets, and that guy Jeff that you met last week. Now let's talk cuisine, which is an integral part for both countries. While American wedding food can vary based on the couple's preferences, French weddings are renowned for their emphasis on gourmet foods that have been carefully carefully paired with fine wine. Basically, French cuisine is renowned and weddings are an opportunity to showcase it. French receptions often include a multi-course meal paired with fine wine and it may last for several hours. Champagne is also frequently served for toasts. And you must clink and keep eye contact before drinking. And you must clink and you keep eye contact. Clink. And you must and keep eye contact. clink and keep eye contact. And you must clink before drinking. Or is bad sex for like a year or something. Oh. I don't know, just, just do it. While tear cakes are present in both cultures, in French weddings, the croque en bouche is a traditional alternative. A tower of cream-filled pastry puffs often drizzled with caramel. Mm. But it's not all sensible on the French side of things. Both Americans and French have big parties after the ceremony. But while Americans usually wrap things up before midnight so that the couple isn't too tired to go consummate the wedding or whatever, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Consummate? <laughs> uh... 
French weddings tend to go all night into the early morning. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that the French go harder than the Americans, but I mean, statistically speaking, <laughs> We go pretty hard. Now, because these French parties go on until dawn, onion soup is usually served in the early mornings to help recover from a long night of partying. Now, as much as I love to talk about the differences between the US and France, let's look at some lesser known wedding traditions across the world. In some parts of Scotland, it is tradition for friends and family to throw messy and sometimes foul things at the bride and groom. This can include things like mud, flour, and even curdled milk. Mm. This is believed to prepare them for the challenges of married life. What's a little issue like infidelity when you've run through curdled milk? Child's play. Has this concept been approved by a therapist? Or? Now in some Chinese communities, brides are required to cry for about an hour every day in the month leading up to the wedding. After 10 days, the bride's mother joins in and then the grandmother. This practice is actually seen as a sign of joy and an offering of good luck. <laughs> oh my God, dude, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'm great. You don't seem great. What's, what's going on? I'm getting married. <laughs> oh, you haven't second thoughts? Yeah, you know what, man? I kind of get that. What? Nah, it's just I, I get that you're having second thoughts. You know, I mean, I, I never really liked her. She's, she's kind of a lot, you know? Wait, no, I'm, I'm, I'm crying because it's supposed to bring me good luck. Wait, you, you, you don't like my bride to be? Why? She's like the love of my life. <laughs> In parts of India, there are traditions where women with certain astrological conditions are urged to marry a tree before they marry a man. And I say, stick to the tree. If you move to the man, you will be disappointed. The tree don't cheat. The tree stays right there, always supporting you until the man comes and cuts it down. This tradition is actually believed to ward off any negative influences on their future husband. In some Romani communities, it is tradition for the groom and his friends to kidnap the bride. And then the bride's family has to negotiate for her return. Now, while this may sound alarming, it's it's said to be lighthearted and good old fashioned romance. In the Tidong community of Indonesia, it is customary for the bride and groom to be confined to their homes without using their toilets for three days and nights. Now, this practice is believed to bring good luck to their marriage. But I actually think this theory probably works. I mean, if you can survive three days and nights without using your bathroom, and don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that they don't pee or poo. They do, they just can't do it in the bathroom. If you could do that and stay with someone, you guys are good to go. You guys are set for life. Now, if you go to a wedding in Kenya, don't be surprised if you see the father of the bride spitting on her dress. For the Maasai people in Kenya, this is actually seen as a sign of respect. Hoping not to jinx the marriage, the spit is meant in good faith. While some of these practices may seem unusual, they often carry deep cultural and symbolic meaning. Now, if you've ever planned a wedding, you'll most likely know just how expensive it is. Now, is it worth it? Yes, very much so. From the venue to the cake, from the cake to catering, the costs add up quickly. Weddings are a huge business, and anyone selling services or products for a wedding doesn't think twice about hiking up their prices. Hello, sir, how can I help you? Hi, yeah, I'd like a cake for my wedding, please. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, uh, how about this one right here? Yeah, that's perfect. How much is it? Great, all right, uh, that'll be $2,000. Oh, whoa, that's super expensive. Isn't it the same as this one? And this one's $60. Yes, but this is actually the wedding version of that cake. And what's the difference? This one is for weddings, but, but it's the same cake. You see, it says wedding cake, you know? So, uh, $2,000. Wow, okay, ridiculous. Um, uh, I'll also have these little cakes here. All right, fantastic. And will those be for a wedding? No. These wedding costs apply to most normal weddings. If you want that big day, then there's just no escaping it. And believe it or not, the country that wastes, wastes, oops, yikes. Didn't mean to say that. And believe it or not, the country that spends the most money on weddings is the US of A. The average cost of a wedding in America is approximately $30,000, which for most people in America is a tremendous amount of money. But honestly, even that seems cheap when you compare it to some of the most expensive high profile weddings in recent times. Let's take a look at a few examples. The the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton in 2011, held in Westminster Abbey in London, is estimated to have cost around 34 million US dollars. Now, could that money maybe have been used to, I don't know, feed the poor? <laughs> Who cares? Big wedding! Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were married in St. George's Chapel in Windsor in 2018, and it was estimated to have cost 45 million 
US dollars. I know someone who regrets footing that bill. Vanisha Mittal, the daughter of billionaire Lakshmi Mittal, apparently had an extravagant wedding not far from here in Paris. The estimated cost was apparently 78 million US dollars. This multi-day celebration included performances from renowned artists, and the reception was held at the Palais de Versailles, which is where the French king used to live. It's a historical place, it's a castle, is where they got married. So that's chill. These people are getting married in the king's house. I'm getting married at my brother's house, which is also, it's a cool spot. Look at that. Look, that's nice. But believe it or not, those weddings have got nothing on this one. In 2015, Chinese billionaire Guo Guangcheng's son had a pretty big wedding, a ceremony that reportedly cost 1.5 Billion US dollars, making it one of the most expensive weddings ever. How do you spend that much money on a ceremony? I'm sure you find a way. I just wanna know how many people were invited at this wedding to see how much money was spent per person. There is nothing that they didn't have at this wedding. Performances by celebrities, obviously a custom designed wedding gown, and very, very, very luxurious accommodations for guests. But you know what? You spend that much money on a wedding, you better hope you're staying together for life. No pressure. So yeah, I think we can agree that weddings are kind of weird, but they're also pretty wonderful. Obviously in some cultures, I'm sure the bride wouldn't love to be spat on or being kidnapped for that matter. But for others, it's absolutely normal. It would actually be considered disrespectful if it didn't happen. From marrying trees to eating onion soup at 5 a.m. with no sleep. Across the world, weddings are rich, varied, and extremely unique. Yes, they're expensive, just ask Wu Guangchang, but for many people, it is considered as one of the happiest days of their life. For anyone who is planning a wedding, don't ask me for advice because I, I don't got any. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what's the weirdest thing you've experienced at a wedding. Au revoir!